Today, we will be doing the first uh, fantasy draft on the channel. The twist for today's video is we are only allowed to draft rookies in the fantasy draft. Um, I'm going to be using the Texans just because they have the rookie of the year this year, or at least the offensive rookie of the year. I guess it doesn't matter too much what team I am. Uh, before we get started with this video, if you like Madden Rebuild, you like Madden, or just if you enjoy the video, please uh, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, it would mean a lot and I'll give you a big kiss. But I don't think there's any much else to say, we're just going to go ahead and get into the fantasy draft here and see what pick we have. And we are picking from pick number 12. I think we all have a pretty good idea who we're going to be taking here in the first round. I know like the game's going to consider this a reach, but I think it's not going to matter because I don't think any of the other players we're going to want are going to be any higher value than CJ Stroud is going to be. So CJ Stroud is going to be our quarterback for the all-rookie rebuild. With our next pick, I think I have a pretty good idea of who I'm going to take. The only thing that bothers me is I don't know who goes first between, um, where is he? Holy shit, wait, so they have Calvin Ridley at a higher overall than Puka Nakua? They have, dude, this is kind of dumb. <laughs> let's, let's ignore that. So I don't know who's going to go first out of Puka Nakua and Jalen Carter. We'll probably be able to get both of them. It looked like there were more receivers on the board. So we're going to go ahead and take Jalen Carter with our second pick. Now with our third pick, we just have to hope and pray that Puka's there, but... I honestly assume, or I thought he was a higher overall, even though I just did a Rams rebuild. I thought he was a higher overall. Let's go ahead and take Puka Nakua here. I'm probably only going to show the first, like, five picks or so, just because if I showed the whole draft, this video would take forever. With our next pick, I think I want to go with um, Bijan Robinson. He is pretty good in this game. He's a lower overall than Jameer Gibbs. I mean, I guess Jameer Gibbs has been playing better in real life, technically, I don't necessarily blame Bijan for that. He had Arthur Smith as his head coach. But maybe we could wait on drafting Bijan. It's not going to matter what order we draft these guys because I think we're going to be able to get everybody we want. So we're going to go ahead and take Bijan Robinson. And I really wanted to get Devin Witherspoon, but apparently I missed out on him. Now that I'm thinking about it, we probably should have taken Devin Witherspoon before Bijan because I should have known that he was going to go earlier. Corners go really early in these drafts. But we're going to be drafting Christian Gonzalez here with the fourth pick. And the last pick I'm going to show, we're going to be taking Brian Branch with our fifth pick. I'm going to go ahead and make, probably, I may not do all the picks, so we may not technically have all rookies on the team, but I'm going to make sure that every starter and hopefully every backup are all rookies so that the only people that aren't rookies aren't going to be getting playing time. But I will see you guys whenever I complete this team. And the lineup is officially complete. I ended up doing every single pick. There, you can look as hard as you want. You can look up anything you want. Everybody on this team is a rookie. I am going to move around like the linebackers just to make you know this look better. Dude, I will say though, Drew Sanders is a stud in this game. Like every time I draft him in a fantasy draft, he turns out to be so good. So I'm excited for this linebacker group. I'm kind of considering trading for Witherspoon and... Uh, Will Anderson because I think they'd be cool to have on this team and we have an extra first round pick because the Texans have the Browns pick so I want to see if I'd be able to make that happen okay I guess not I swore that the Texans had an extra first round pick but I guess not and we get Devin Witherspoon I'm honestly okay with giving up this draft capital for this first upcoming draft because it's not like I mean we already have all rookies anyways you know what I mean so I'm kind of okay with getting rid of these uh, picks. So I'm going to try to get Will Anderson now. If I'm not able to get him without giving up too much, I may not, but we'll see. And we are able to acquire Will Anderson. We're not going to have a first-round pick for the next two years, but I don't think that's the purpose of this rebuild anyways because this is the all-rookie team. We're not going to be you know, doing much in the draft that we're going to need anyway because we have youth everywhere. But I will say that does make the defense look a lot better because now we have Witherspoon and Gonzalez and now we have Will Anderson added to the D-line. So let me um, move some people around and we'll take a look at the lineup. All right, so this looks a little better. Uh, we're just going to leave Trent Simpson as the backup middle linebacker because we really only used two to begin with and I moved him to our uh, third sub linebacker so he will come in, you know, if we get to that point. Um, 
I don't think there's anything else I need to do. I didn't show this. I also got uh, Jake Moody and Behringer. So literally everybody on our team is a rookie. Like I'm kind of excited. I think if there's any problem that we're going to realize with this team, it's going to be the receiver core. So that's definitely going to be what we're looking for in the draft. But the rest of the team looks good other than maybe free safety. Yeah, the rest looks good because Jalen Carter is going to develop. Will Anderson's going to develop. Both of our corners are going to develop. Our linebackers are going to develop. CJ Stroud is going to be a stud. Robinson's going to be a stud. We also got Devon Achan as the backup. Puka is going to develop. Josh Downs, I've actually seen do pretty good in this game. And then I know Skaronski is a fucking stud. And then the rest of the line, we'll see how they develop. And Sam Laporta, obviously a fucking stud. I even drafted a rookie fullback. So everything, every single person on this team is a fucking rookie. So this is going to be exciting. We're going to go ahead and get to the midseason of this first year. And at the midseason, we are only 2-4 and four so far on the year. I didn't make any changes to our playbooks yet. I don't know how the Houston playbook does. Apparently not so good. Maybe it's just because we have a bunch of rookies, but I feel like our offense, or I guess our offense is pretty low overall. Maybe we'll make a change to the playbook. That's kind of looking like it's going to be the move. We'll take a look at our stats. We'll go kind of quick because I'm trying to get these videos a little bit shorter. CJ Stroud isn't doing terrible. 1,000 yards, 7 touchdowns, 2 picks. B. John Robinson's definitely underperforming. 300 yards, 1 touchdown. Not averaging many yards on the carry, at least not as much as I'd like. Puka leading the team in... Uh, Receiving yards, 287, two touchdowns. Laporta is in second with 200 yards, two touchdowns. The O-line is holding up not bad, actually, especially for how this game is. Both of our tackles have allowed four and one from each of the guys on the interior. Defensively, Jack Campbell is leading the team in tackles. Sacks, we have one and a half out of Will Anderson, one out of Drew Sanders, and one out of Derek Hall. Interceptions, we have one out of Drew Sanders and one out of Devon Witherspoon. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what players we have ready to negotiate. It says we have 20, but I don't think we're going to have many important players to bring back. Obviously, we want to bring back Puka, Nik Puka Nikua. I'll give him a five years, 70 mil, and he takes it. Ryan Branch, I would also like to bring back. We'll give him five years, uh, 42 and a half mil. He takes it. Ryan Brees hasn't unlocked his debt trade yet, but this is actually pretty cheap. So if I could get him for multiple years on this deal, that'd be sick. Four years, 22 mil. He's excited to stay with the team. And then... We'll probably consider bringing back Jalen Hyatt just because our receiving core isn't very good, but none of these guys are too important to re-sign right now. So we're just going to get to the end of this season. And at the end of the first season, we finished 7-10. and 10. Honestly, better than I expected. We probably won a decent amount of games in the second half of the season. I did see that. I honestly can't remember if I showed this or not, but I'm going to do it just to be safe. Will Anderson hit a breakout. So that's pretty sick. Uh, Trent Simpson didn't finish his, didn't get enough snaps to unlock his dev trade. So he may just go down to normal, which kind of sucks. But I mean, we have a decent amount of dev trades on the team now. CJ Stroud, Bijan, Puka. Knew all these guys were going to be superstars. Same with Jalen Carter. But Will Anderson hitting a breakout is going to be huge for this team. Morale is low. Definitely going to need a better season this next year. We don't even have our first round pick. So it kind of isn't that good that we had a bad record. But I guess... We could have been worse. We'll probably have like, I don't know, the 10th, 11th pick. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the offseason. And the Giants... Oh, I kind of forgot this was a uh, fantasy draft. The Giants take down the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. I will actually look at this because it's kind of cool to see what players everybody... Or Actually, that reminds me. I forgot to check the yearly awards. Can I still look at them? Fuck, I can't. Well, I did check them like yesterday when I stopped recording. Um, and I know, I think we won Offensive Rookie of the Year with C.J. Stroud, but we did not win Defensive Rookie of the Year, I think. C.J. Stroud didn't go up to X-Factor for that, though. Let's take a look. Yeah, he went Offensive Rookie of the Year. Didn't go up to uh, X-Factor, but, I mean, he did get two upgrades, I guess. I guess it's fine. Uh, did we have any other dev ups on defense? We did not. I guess it's all right. C.J. Stroud will eventually go up to X-Factor, I assume. But... With that being said, let me actually go back and actually look at these. Uh, Christian McCaffrey wins Super Bowl MVP. Lamar Jackson wins MVP for the Dolphins. Uh, Calvin Ridley wins Offensive Player of the Year for the Chiefs. Aaron Donald wins Defensive Player of the Year on the Cardinals. Jackson Smith and Jigbas now on the 49ers wins Rookie of the Year. And Tuli Tilopu on the Dolphins wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. I've never seen him win Defensive Rookie of the Year before in this game, so I guess that's kind of cool. Yeah, let's go ahead and get to the next week and re-sign any players that we need to. 
So we will bring back a Jalen Hyatt just because our receiving core is kind of not very good right now. And in case we're not able to hit on anybody in the draft, it'd probably be safe to bring him back. But the rest of these guys don't really get playing time. They're all just kind of backups. So I think I'm going to be okay with letting them walk. We will resign Jake Moody because why not? I'll honestly give him like a fucking six-year deal just so I don't have to worry about resigning him. He resigns. And I guess we'll bring back Hunter Luipke. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Does this guy play for the Cowboys or the Texans? I honestly can't remember. We'll give him a little bonus so that he accepts it and he takes it. So let's go ahead and we're not going to be signing any free agents because I think that's going to defeat the purpose of the video. So we're just going to get straight to the draft. And our first pick in the draft is round two, pick 14. So let's go ahead and get there, see if there's anybody available for us to take. I, I would like to take a receiver here. And I remember seeing a decent amount of ones that were round one to two talents that looked pretty good. Oh, and here is one that I focus scouted. Uh, Tyquan Meredith, 21 years old out of Utah. He ran a 4.39. He only has great speed, though, but he has elite agility. He also has solid strength. But he has some good uh, core attributes. He has A spec catch, B catch in traffic, and B release, which I've kind of noticed are like the most important um, stats and receivers for their overall. But he does only have C awareness, and is his injury shown on here? Oh, it has a B injury. I think this guy is going to be hidden dev. He, his player notes look okay. He does lack discipline, and he needs to work on simple concentration drops. The rest of them actually look pretty good, though. I think this guy is going to be hidden dev. So we're, he's only 5'8", but we're going to be taking Taekwondo. Oh, my God. We're going to be taking Taekwondo Meredith out of Utah. Hidden dev, 94 speed, 92 excel, 86 jumping. That guy is going to be a pretty good player for us. You know, we'll definitely have a starting role in the lineup. We have the first overall pick in the third round. I would kind of like to take a corner here. I'm not sure how these corners look. Oscar Frazier doesn't look terrible out of Nebraska. He is 24 years old and he ran a 4.59. Jeez, yeah, we're not going to be taking him. Jamison Bonds, 23 out of Florida State. He was the fastest corner in the combine, but what does that really mean? A to C awareness, A to C block shedding. He does have B press, but his zone and man coverage are terrible. I don't know if there's going to be a corner that's good enough for us to take here. Keontae Rose, 22. He ran a 4.48. He has decent strength and marginal speed. C man, D zone. Like, why do none of the corners know how to cover? Is there a single good corner here? Yeah, the answer is no. There's not a single good corner. We could technically use a safety, so let me see if there's any a good one of those. Chad Terry, 22 out of Oregon. He was the fastest safety at the combine. He has great speed. C to F awareness, though. He has A to C zone, A to C finesse moves, A to C catching, but those are like his only good ratings. This draft class kind of sucks dick. The strong safeties didn't look much better. I mean, actually, Jonathan Bullock doesn't look terrible. 22 out of Michigan. We're in a 4.67. It says he has poor speed. I guess a 467 is pretty slow, but he has elite strength. This guy doesn't look bad. He does have B to D zone, B to D, uh, who cares about kick return? He does have D man, but A to C play rec, A to C pursue, B hit power, B finesse moves. This guy looks like the best player on the board, so we're going to go ahead and take Jonathan Bullock. Only normal dev, he has 91 excel, 82 speed. I don't know if that guy's going to be a very good overall. I feel like that wasn't a very good pick. This is going to be the last pick that I show here. It'll probably be the last one I take, to be honest. Not 100% sure, but I don't even know what I want to take here. If I'm being completely honest with you, I'm probably just going to try to find the best looking player on the board, regardless of if we need him or not, which is probably going to be Brian Foster. He had 30 bench reps, solid strength. He has a uh, good speed, great change of direction for what that's worth. But he's B run block, B run block finesse, A lead block, B pass block finesse. His only bad rating is his run block power and his injury. But I think this guy's going to be all right. So we're going to go ahead and take Brian Foster out of Texas. Hidden dead, 85 strength. I think I'm going to take this last pick in the fourth round, but uh, I'm just going to see you guys at the draft recap. Looking at the draft recap, we didn't do very good, actually. I was about to say we didn't do that bad. But yeah, this isn't very good. I'm not going to lie to you. Meredith is actually a really good player, so he's probably the only starter we got out of this because Bullock's only a 66 overall. I mean, Foster isn't terrible, but not good enough to start. And then I also took Pirine, and he's not very good. Let's go ahead and take a look on who we missed out on. And there was a 77 overall out, uh, linebacker that went in the third round. The best players all went in the second or third round. The best player that went in the first round was a wide receiver who's a 76 overall. And isn't that, like, 
the same exact overall as our receiver. Yeah, so we actually did pretty good in this draft, considering that the draft class wasn't that good. I set them to strong, but I don't know if I did it early enough because I did it once the season already started. So I don't think it makes it that actual draft class strong, but the next upcoming draft classes should be pretty good. Let's take a look at the lineup. It looks like the running back the CPU took is actually hidden dev, but he's not going to have much use for us. I'm going to move our center to these backup positions so that, you know, maybe he'll at least get some reps. But the receiving core looks better now. I think Meredith is going to be a good player. Defensively, I don't think we added anybody that's going to start because our safety was a 66 overall. Defense looks pretty much the same as before. Trenton Simpson's star dev now, or I'm sorry, normal dev now like I expected. Team could look worse. It's just really young. We just need to develop better. Everybody has minus morale. If we could have a winning season, I think we'll be able to get up to a pretty high overall. So we're going to go ahead and get into the season. Here we are going into the season. We're sitting at an 81 overall. We're definitely one of the lower overall teams throughout the league. We just really need this team to start developing and at least win like nine games or so so we don't have negative morale. But let's get to the midseason of this second year. And we're actually four and three at the midseason. We have the 13th offense and points per game in the ninth defense. Our rushing defense isn't very good, but hey, I'll take ninth defense and points per game. Let's take a look at our players that are ready to negotiate. We definitely want to bring back Jalen Carter. I'm going to give him a uh, five-year deal. He's on the fence, okay? Guess we're going to have to give him more money later. Obviously, we want to bring back Sam Laporta. Five years, uh, 47 mil. And he takes it. I would like to bring back Jack Campbell as well. We're pretty much going to bring back everybody that's actually a starter for us. Jack Campbell takes that offer. We'll bring back Drew Sanders as well. Four years, 15.2 mil. He's excited to stay with the team. Anton Harris we want to bring back. We'll give him three years, uh, 22.8 mil. He takes it. Want to bring back Joe Titman? We're pretty much having to re-sign like everybody right now. He takes that deal, and then I want to say the rest of these guys we don't need to bring back right now. I will bring back Keely Ringo just because he's probably a starter as of right now, and he takes it. So the only person left that we need to re-sign is Jalen Carter. I'll probably re-sign him next week because he's going to develop by the end of the year and be more expensive. First, let's take a look at our stats on the year so far. CJ Shroud with 1,600 yards, 14 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 67%, oh my god, 66% completion percentage. Bijan's averaging 4.2 on the ground, almost 500 yards, 5 touchdowns. Receiving Puka Nakua's leading the team with 600 yards, 6 touchdowns. Our rookie's actually playing pretty good, 400 yards, almost 4 touchdowns. Josh Downs, 300 yards, 2 touchdowns on Laporta with 200 yards and a touchdown. The O-line is holding up not bad, but this is about how it looked at the midseason last year. We all saw how that finished. Broderick Jones with four sacks allowed. Scaronzi's allowed three. Tipman's allowed three. Or, or Torrance has allowed three. And Anton Harris has actually only allowed one. So that's actually really good to see. Defensively, Jack Campbell's leading the team in tackles. Sacks, we have four out of Will Anderson, three out of Brian Brees, two and a half out of Jalen Carter. If you guys hear my stupid cat meowing in the background, he will not stop. Like, he's begging to come in my room when I close the door. So I let him in. And he just starts meowing again. So I let him out. And then he just starts meowing again. Anyways, that's besides the point. Will Anderson, eight TFLs. Jalen Carter with four. Cancy with four interceptions. We have one out of Witherspoon, one out of Jack Campbell, one out of Christian Gonzalez. So the year's going all right. I'll definitely take it over how we went last year. Can't really complain much. Let's go ahead and get to the end of the season and hopefully get a playoff spot. Just wanted to make sure I show you guys this. I was able to bring back Jalen Carter. Can't remember what the deal I gave him was, but he actually accepted it, and that's all that matters. What? This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. We went 6-11 and and won the division and made the play. We started off 4-3, and so that means we went 2-8 and on the rest of the season, which makes me mad, but we're in the playoffs. So can I be that mad? Yeah, I think I can. But let's take a look at our lineup, see everybody's dead trait are... Rookie receiver is star, and I think I was actually our only hit and depth player on the team. But the morale's definitely less low than it was before. Holy shit, we're in the playoffs at 6-11. That is just the craziest thing I've ever seen. So let's try to find the reason why we went 6-11. CJ Stroud wasn't terrible, 3,800 yards, 28 touchdowns, 12 picks. Rushing, Bijan was pretty good, 4.6 per carry, 1,200 yards, 14 touchdowns. Receiving, Puka was pretty good, 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns. Meredith, 800 yards, 4 touchdowns. Probably not enough for Rookie of the Year, but we'll see. Josh Downs, 792 yards, 7 touchdowns. And Laporta with 500 yards, 2 touchdowns. 
the O-line held up. Uh, oh, okay, I got confused. I remember, I thought Anton Harris had like one sack allowed at the midseason, and I thought it was Broderick Jones. But 14 sacks allowed out of him, uh, 7 out of Anton Harrison, uh, 5 out of Skaronski, 5 out of Titman, 4 out of Torrance. The interior is playing pretty good, but it's also, I guess, uh, harder to allow sacks from the interior than it is from tackle. But Broderick Jones is not playing very good. Defensively, Jack Campbell had 112, or I'm sorry, 141 tackles, which is pretty sick. Sacks, we had 10 out of Will Anderson, 8 out of Brian Brees, 5.5 out of Jalen Carter, 5.5 out of Kansi. 15 TFLs out of Jalen Carter, 12 out of Will Anderson, 11 out of Kansi. Interceptions, we got two from Jack Campbell, two from Christian Gonzalez, two from Devon Witherspoon, one from Sanders, Branch, and Ringo. The team, what was the problem, do we think? We didn't get very, very many sacks. We allowed a lot of sacks. Joe Burrow's on the Chiefs and wins MVP. That's pretty funny. Of course, we have nobody in the running. We're definitely not going to be in the running for Coach of the Year. Offensive Player of the Year, Bijan Robinson came in eighth place. Ninth place goes to Puka Nakua. First place is Travis Etienne on the Chiefs. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Nick Bosa, now on the Bengals. We had nobody in the running. I honestly expected to see Will Anderson like somewhere in the voting. And we did win Offensive Rookie of the Year with Taekwon Meredith, which is awesome. But um, yeah, I guess we're going to have to get into this playoff game. Sitting at 6 and 11. Uh, not much else to say there, I guess. We're also. Are we hosting a playoff game? Yeah, we're hosting a playoff game, no? Dude, we're hosting a playoff game at 6 and 11. If anybody's ever seen anything like this in this game before, let me know, because that's pretty funny. Let's get to the divisional. Based off how this game is, I would not be surprised if we won here. Let's see if we can get a win. And I was wrong. We lose 21 to 10. Um,. We were 20th in points per game, and we just only scored 10 points in our playoff game. So the offensive playbook I'm using right now probably is the issue because defense played all right. We're allowing a lot of rushing yards, but fourth ranked in defensive passing yards, not bad at all. Let's get to the next season, dude. We we suck. Like, this is bad. I expected this to go a lot better than this, but apparently it's going to actually be a challenge. Probably because we're not able to sign free agents is going to make this a little more difficult. Let's get into the offseason. And the Falcons beat the Jets in the Super Bowl, 35-13. to We'll again take a look at the yearly recap just because I like seeing what team everybody's on. And Baker Mayfield won Super Bowl MVP for the Falcons. Uh, I forgot we did already check a lot of these awards, but it actually went to a couple players in the NFC, which we didn't uh, check. Offensive Player of the Year goes to Josh Jacobs for the Falcons. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Micah Parsons for the Bears. The Falcons win Offensive Rookie of the Year, and Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to the Chargers. And I thought Meredith was going to go up to Superstar from winning Offensive Rookie of the Year for the AFC, but he doesn't. But it's not that big of a deal because Puka Nakua is now up to X-Factor. The team's overall is looking a lot better. No dev ups on defense again. Or actually, no. Um, Derek Hall, I don't know why I couldn't remember his name, was definitely normal dev before this season. So we will take a dev up out of him. I think we're going to look to, into drafting a corner in this upcoming draft. Definitely drafting a safety but we need to get into the next week and see if there's any other players we need to resign. I don't think we have any, but, it, you know, we still got to check. Yeah, we definitely don't need, don't need to assign Xavier Gibson. I don't think we need to resign any of these guys. Looking at it, maybe I'll resign our fullback. Should I? Fuck it. Honestly, thought I gave this guy multiple years. I'm just going to give him three years so I have to stop resigning him. But again, we're not going to be signing any free agents, so let's just get straight to the draft. And because we hosted a playoff game, I guess, we uh, are picking at round two, pick number 19. That was an interesting season, to say the least. That's about all I can say about that. I focused out at some corners, so hopefully the ones that I looked at are still available. And one of them is still here, uh, Quayshawn Coles. Also scouted a couple safeties. Ooh, and Jamal Ellie, or I read that completely wrong. Jamal Flott is a round one talent, so I think this is probably who we're going to go with over... Quayshawn Coles because I think we need a safety more than we need a corner if we can get around one talent we're gonna take it 21 years old at a UCLA ran a 4-4-2 he has great speed good change of direction B awareness a block shedding a pursuit a hit power a injury a tackle his zone is a little low and so is his man is he like a run stopper corner yeah he is so we're gonna take a shot on Jamal Flott here out of UCLA and around one talent is normal dev makes sense I guess let's just fucking hope that corner is there in the third round because that was stupid. And why would the corner be here still? Why would he be? I'm honestly pretty frustrated. That guy, how are you around one talent in your normal dev? That's what I don't understand. 
This game just doesn't make much sense to me. Couldn't really find any good corners left, so I think we may just take a shot on another safety here. He has good strength, decent speed, solid acceleration, A block shed, A pursuit. I mean, this guy doesn't look as good as the first one we took, but with how this game is, this guy's probably going to be hidden dev. Yep. What did I say? So that guy, I bet if we focus scouted him, was like around two to three talent or something. And the other guy was around one talent. And that guy's hidden dev and the other guy isn't. I'm complaining a lot, but that's stupid. Like, am I in the wrong for thinking that's stupid? Because that's pretty fucking stupid. But with our last pick here, I think we're going to be taking Shenard Holloway. We're going to 4770. He has decent strength, good speed, decent jumping. Definitely not the best traits, but his attributes look alright. B awareness, B catching traffic, A to C run block. Hmm... The more I'm looking at him, the worse he looks. But fuck it, I'm just going to take him. Hidden dev. Okay. Would have much rather... I, I, I'm going to stop complaining. Let's just get to the draft recap. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. The highest overall player we drafted is normal dev. And he's 21. And this 74 overall 23-year-old is hidden dev. The 65 overall 23-year-old hidden dev. I really don't know what else to say. The CPU did take a 71 overall normal dev i don't even know which of these safeties to start i mean probably just the guy with the dev trade just because i guess he's gonna develop faster so let's go take a look at the lineup and here's a look at the lineup after the draft i guess the only thing we added on the offense is the new backup tight end who um is that Deion sanders maybe i'm tweaking but that guy looks way too much like Deion sanders okay whatever um, yeah, that's the only addition. Of, oh my god, I can, why can I not talk? That's the only addition to the offense. Defensively, we added Galvin. We're going to play start him at free safety. Would have liked to add a corner to that draft, but there weren't really any worth taking. But the defense doesn't look bad. Neither does the offense. Um, if I had to say anything, we could definitely use some work on the O-line just because of how they've been playing. And we need the pass rush to step up their game because it's not going to cut it. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into the next season. Sitting at an 83 overall. I think that's the same overall as we were last season. Still probably one of the lower overalls in the league. This is going to be the year. We're going to go above 500. We're going to actually earn our playoff spot this year. Let's get to the midseason of the third year of the rebuild. At the midseason of this year, we are 5-2. and two. Not winning the division as of right now, but we have the 10th offense in points per game. Our offensive passing yards are good. Our defensive passing yards are good. Defense not playing very good, but we do have a good... How do we have, like, the best passing defense in the league last year? Not the best, but we had, like, a top five or so and a bad rushing defense, and it just goes the exact opposite with the same playbook and the same players. Whatever. Let's look at what players we have to resign, And we want to bring back Christian Gonzalez for sure. Going to give him five years, 47 mil. He resigns. Definitely want to bring back Peter Skaronski. Definitely our best O-lineman as of right now. We're going to give him a fat deal. Four years, 61 mil. He takes it. Derek Hall, I guess we'll bring back four years. We'll give him four years, uh, 27.2 mil. Doesn't resign yet. It's whatever. Uh, we, I guess, no, Jordan Battle's not even starting for us anymore, I don't think, so we'll let him walk. Maybe not walk, but we'll consider resigning him at the end of the year. And taking a look at the stats, CJ Stroud's having a hell of a year. 1,500 yards, 17 touchdowns, two picks. Rushing, Bijan Robinson's doing great. 6.1 per carry, 600 yards, three touchdowns. Receiving Puka Nakua with 500 yards, 8 touchdowns. Laporta, 300 yards, 5 touchdowns. Josh Downs, 300 yards, 3 touchdowns. The O-line is holding up pretty good. Tittman's allowed 5 sacks. Harrison allowed 5. Uh, 3 out of Torrance. Uh, only 2 out of Broderick Jones. Can't wait for this to say 15 at the end of the year. And Skaronski's only allowed 1 sack so far in the year. Jack Campbell leading the team in tackles again. Sacks, we already have 5 out of Will Anderson and 10 TFLs. 3.5 out of Brees. And 2 sacks out of Jalen Carter with 8 TFLs. Interceptions, two from Brian Branch, two from Devin Witherspoon, one from Ringo, one from Trenton Simpson. But yeah, this is definitely the best beginning to the season we've had so far. So hopefully, you know, we can keep it going. We're going to get to the end of the season and hopefully get a playoff spot not at 6-11. and 11. And at the end of this season, we finish 13-4, win the division, and make a playoff game. Maybe should have been good enough for the one seed, but we had the fourth offense in uh, points per game and the ninth defense. I'm pretty sure our pass yards per game and rush yards per game are exactly flipped from last year, and I didn't change the, play the defensive playbook at all, so that's pretty weird. But let's take a look at our stats. Shroud was third in the NFL in passing yards with 4,100 yards, 34 touchdowns to six picks. He'll definitely be up there for MVP, but 
quarterbacks have crazy seasons in this uh in the sim uh B. John robinson did pretty good 1300 yards 5.2 per carry 11 touchdowns uh, receiving Puka with 1,200 yards, 16 touchdowns. Sam Laporta, 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. Josh Down, 700 yards, 5 touchdowns. The O-line held up. Uh, this actually isn't bad. I don't know how you allow 9 sacks at center, but Anton Harrison allowed 9, and Broderick Jones actually didn't allow 15 sacks. He actually played pretty good. Skronsky with 4 and Torrance with 4. Defensively, Jack Campbell with 114 tackles. 12 and a half sacks at a Will Anderson with 23 TFLs. We'll probably see him up there for defensive player of the year seven sacks out of brian breeze four and a half sacks out of jalen carter with 18 tfls interceptions five out of devin witherspoon three out of brian branch two out of jaron galvin and this was our rookie so maybe we'll see him up there for defensive rookie of the year i don't think he's gonna win it, especially not a safety one pick out of ringo one pick out of trenton simpson and one out of christian gonzalez i actually want to see how jake moody's doing 17 for 19 that's actually not bad so we'll take that let's go ahead and take a look at the yearly awards and MVP goes to Jordan Love, who is actually still on the Packers. Tua in second with the Panthers, and CJ Shroud came in third place this year. We actually won Coach of the Year, so that's kind of pretty sick. Uh, AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Nick Chubb. Puka came in fourth place. CJ Shroud came in eighth. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Quinnen Williams, now on the Chiefs. We came in third place with Will Anderson. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Logan Rogers for the Titans. We had nobody in the running there. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Alex Winston for the Broncos, and Galvin came in seventh place for us. But yeah, let's go ahead and sim to the divisional. We're playing the 9-8 and eight Chargers. We're a higher overall. We've won four more games than them. So if we lose this game, I am going to be salty, and I'm going to complain. And we smoke them, 37-13, to 13, going up against the Chiefs, who went 12-5, and five, sitting at an 87 overall. They had the number one offensive points per game and the number two defense. They have Joe Burrow, who threw 32 touchdowns and six picks. This is a game I would be okay with losing, but we just came off our first playoff win of the rebuild, so we're definitely getting somewhere. Let's see if we can beat the Chiefs in the divisional. And we actually won. Holy shit, I was not expecting that. 23-21 over the Chiefs. We're playing the Jets in the AFC Championship, who we actually played when we went 6-11 and and made the playoffs. I would say we look better than them statistically because we had a better passing offense and around the same uh, rushing offense, and our defense uh, allowed way less points than theirs. So let's go ahead and send to the Super Bowl. Hopefully we can make it. Please, dude, please, 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 please. Fuck! We lost. By one point. Let's see how everybody did. CJ Stroud almost had a perfect pass rating. Three touchdowns, zero picks. He had a 70% completion percentage. I guess not that close to a perfect pass rating, but pretty damn good. Bijan Robinson did pretty good. 4.5 on the ground. Uh, per carry receiving puka was insane four for 173 two touchdowns was our o-line bad i mean anton harrison didn't play great defensively do we have like any turnovers at all no interceptions and they had a fourth fumble and we did not and then kicking we made all our extra points i was pretty scared that we we're gonna have a missed extra point in there and that was gonna be what lost us the game but no we just lost by one point i really thought we were gonna win that don't know how we beat the Chiefs and lost to the Jets. Not going to get into it. We're going to get into this next year of the rebuild, potentially the last year, depending on how it goes. And the Jets win the Super Bowl by one point as well. Whatever. The Super Bowl MVP went to David Montgomery. <sighs> Here's a look at the lineup after the season. CJ Shroud went up to X-Factor. Sam Laporta went up to Superstar. We're definitely a way higher overall than we were the previous years. Defensively, Will Anderson goes up to X-Factor. Devin Witherspoon goes up to Superstar. So the two guys we traded for that we gave up our first round picks for, making it worth it, we're actually going to have a first round pick in this upcoming draft. Hopefully we can get a stud corner to be our third corner. I think that's the last thing we're going to need for this team to kind of get us over that edge. We're sitting at an 87 overall with no free agents being signed. So let's go ahead and get to the draft. In this year's draft, we're going to be trading up for Dalton Aldridge because I don't think we're missing much on this team other than a third corner. And Dalton Aldridge looks like a stud. So we're going to try to trade with the Browns and get their first round pick and see what we have to give up for it. And we're going to be trading the Texans our first round pick, our second round pick, and our third round pick from this year's draft, and a second round pick from next year. They were being stingy, but I think it's going to be worth it. Let's go ahead and get to the draft and see if we're able to get Aldridge. And here's my boy, Dalton Aldridge, 21 years old out of NC State. We're in a 4-4-1. He has elite change of direction and elite acceleration with good speed. B awareness, B block shedding, he has B man and B zone, A catching, 
He does have low play rec, but I think it's going to be all right. I think this guy's going to be hidden dev. Every fucking time I say that, how is somebody a round one talent projected to go 11th overall normal dev? And watch, that guy is going to be a 76 or a 77 overall. I'm calling it right now. His overall will be 76 or 77, and he's 21 years old, and he will be normal dev. Anyways, I think we're going to go with Trayvon Collins with our next pick. Don't even want to look into it just because that was fucking annoying. Let's get to the draft recap. And if that guy is a high overall that I just drafted, I'm going to punch my monitor and suplex it and jump up and down on it. And would you look at that? Dalton Aldridge, a 77 overall, 21-year-old rookie, normal dev. Don't know how 75 zone coverage is considered a B, but I guess it's not that important. I don't remember what his press was, but his press is 68. Whatever. I literally called his exact overall, and he wasn't hidden dev. This tight end the CPU took his hidden dev, and he's 73, and he's a 22-year-old. I mean, at least the corner's good enough to start. That's all that technically matters. Let's go ahead and take a look at the lineup. Also forgot to re-sign our punter. Maybe he'll be in free agency or something, but here's a look at the defense going into this next season. Definitely looks real good. The offense looks almost even better. We have a really good receiving core, two insane running backs, two good tight ends, and the O-line's been playing pretty all right, so hopefully, you know, we can actually make the Super Bowl this year. We were really close last year. We were one fucking point away. Let's go ahead and get to the season. I'm going to see you guys at the mid-season of year number four. Our punter actually is sitting in free agency, so we're going to bring back Bryce Berenger. Technically not cheating because he was on the team and he was a rookie when we first started. So just wanted to make sure I show you guys that. At the midseason, we're sitting at three and four. We have the third offense and pass yards per game and the eighth offense and rush yards per game, but only the 18th in points per game. Defense is fucking doing awful. So that's not good. But <laughs> oh my God, I'm fucking tweaking. Let's go ahead and take a look at our stats so far in the year. CJ Shroud's third in the NFL in passing yards, 1,700 yards, nine touchdowns, four picks. Definitely a down season from last year. Bichon's doing good, averaging five per carry, 584 yards, seven touchdowns. Receiving, Sam Laporte is leading the team with 600 yards, four touchdowns. Puka with only 380 and two touchdowns. The line's holding up a pretty dog shit. Broderick Jones already allowed seven sacks. This is probably going to be like at least fucking like 18 by the end of the year. Tittman's doing all right, so is the rest of the guys. Defensively, Jack Campbell's leading the team in tackles. Three sacks out of Will Anderson, three out of Jalen Carter, one out of Cansey. Seven TFLs out of Will Anderson, six out of Jalen Carter. And we have two interceptions on the year, one from Jack Campbell and one from Jaron Galvin. And Jake Moody is fucking terrible. I didn't even mean to look at that, but I wish I didn't. Let's take a look at what players we need to resign because this probably isn't going to be the last year of the rebuild because we're doing fucking awful. Will Anderson, we obviously want to bring back, so I'm going to give him a nice juicy deal. Four years, 84 mil, whatever. Probably should have just went player friendly. We'll do, the, we'll do it with B. John Robinson and Leonard Lesson. He takes it. Devin Witherspoon, I definitely want to bring back. I'll make it player friendly and up the money. He takes it. Josh Downs, we'd like to bring him back. Player friendly. He takes it. I'm not going to resign Broderick Jones, actually. We're going to hold off on him. Hasn't even been playing good. I would like to bring back a Kalijah Kansi, player friendly, up the money. He takes it. And yeah, we need to bring back our right guard. He actually hasn't been playing bad throughout this rebuild. He's excited to stay with the team. And the rest of these guys can wait till the end of the year. I'll probably bring back Will Anderson next week. We lost 45 to 21 to the Titans. I just saw that. Anyways, let's get to the end of the season. Hopefully, you know, we can get this shit together and make the playoffs, but I guess we're going to have to find out. And we actually finished the season 11-6. and six. We did not win the division, but we do make the playoffs against our division winner. We had the six offense in points per game, the number one passing offense. Defense kept playing like shit throughout the year, so let's take a look at the stats. CJ Stroud led the league in passing yards with 4,630 touchdowns to eight picks. Pretty good season from him. Bijan with 1,200 yards, 4.8 per carry, 13 touchdowns. Receiving Sam Laporta with 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns. He'll probably go up to X-Factor. Puka with 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns. The O-line, let's let's see. Definitely could have been worse with how it, we looked at the midseason. 13 sacks allowed out of Broderick Jones, 10 out of Anton Harrison, 6 from Skaronski, 6 from Titman, 4 from Torrance. Defensively, Jack Campbell leads our team in tackles again. 
nine and a half sacks out of Jalen Carter, seven and a half out of Willie Anderson, seven out of uh, Cancy. Jalen Carter may give, get a dev up with this. I don't know if he will since he didn't get 10 sacks. Interceptions, we got two out of, we only had four interceptions on the year. Yikes. Let's see how Jake Moody did. You know what? He did better the second half of the year. Yearly awards, Joe Burrow wins MVP again. CJ Shroud comes in sixth place. Uh, oh shit. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to ETN. And B. John Robinson comes in seventh place. CJ Stroud comes in ninth. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Miles Garrett for the Jets. Jalen Carter came in eighth place. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Dre Duhon for the Chiefs. Don't think we had any starting rookies on offense. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Brooks Wilson for the Jaguars. Oh my god, I thought this was going to say Michael Vick. That's about to be so funny. And our rookie corner came all the way down in 10th place. But hopefully we can make a good playoff run this year. Um, if we lose in the wild card, we're going to do one more season. Let's go ahead and sim to the divisional and see if we can get a win. We do. We win 31-21 to over the Jaguars. We're playing the 11-6 and Chargers next, who have two overall lower than us. They definitely had a better defense than us, but we definitely had a better offense. Let's go ahead and sim to the AFC Championship, see if we can get a win. And we do. We win by 19. We have a weekly award, and it goes to Kansi, who had four tackles and two sacks. Pretty big. Hopefully, he can do that in this game because the Chiefs went 16 and one, had the number one scoring offense and the number four scoring defense. We beat them last year in the playoffs. We are a higher overall, but I don't see much of a reason we should win this game. Let's get into the Super Bowl, and hopefully, we can beat the Kansas City Chiefs. And we beat the Chiefs in advance to the Super Bowl. I don't know why I would uh, cheat, but just so everybody can see, we're going to go to the postseason. None of the games were force wins. The CPU won all of those games. Just wanted to get that out there because if I was watching this video and that happened after the previous years, I would have been sus myself. We have the luxury of going against the 9-8 and eight Packers. They actually did have the number two scoring offense, but... Their defense wasn't crazy. Ours is obviously worse. Let's take a look at the lineup, though, because this is the point where our Devas are going to hit, and I think Sam Laporte is going to be X-Factor, and he is. Our backup tight end that was uh, hidden is actually Superstar, so that's pretty sick. Defensively, Jalen Carter did get Superstar, as I called, and Jack Campbell goes up to Superstar. So this is going to be the last season. This is going to be the last game of the rebuild. We're going to hop in and watch the Super Bowl and see how we can do. Looks like the Packers have Stephon Diggs, Pat Fryermuth, who went up to X-Factor, and Jordan Love, who went up to X-Factor. Here we are in the Super Bowl. I'm going to play a couple plays just because this team we built is kind of fun. I'm not going to do anything to heavily impact the game. I just kind of want to hop in and have some fun and dick around. I want to hand this to Bijan on the first play. Ooh, broke a tackle. First down. That's going to be the only play we're going to do. I just kind of wanted to look at the team looks so sick dude with all these rookies that are now developed so we're gonna go ahead and see what happens um hopefully we can get a win here that would be really sick and it looks like we are not able to drive down the field we get stopped we get a stop and get on the board with a touchdown to go up 7-0 they tie it up 7-7 get a stop they're driving down the field get a touchdown to make it 7-14 we're not able to get down the field they go up by two touchdowns in the third we get on the board with a field goal and get a stop and we get a touchdown. It's now a three-point game, and we have the ball. We're driving down the field. We go up by four points. We're down by three. And we score last second to win the game. Wow, what a perfect ending to this rebuild, dude. See, I have my hands on my head right now, and then it just showed CJ Stroud with his hands on his head. That was so funny. Holy shit. Can I bring my face cam in here? I got to do something. Shout out to my fucking boy, CJ Stroud getting us to the Super Bowl in the last year of the rebuild, getting us a win. I'm so fucking hype. Oh my God, I was so disappointed in the year before when we lost in, this, in the AFC Championship. Fucking it gets us to the win. Last second touchdown to win the game. We gotta take a look at the stats on this game first before, you know, we end the video. Fuck, where'd I put my controller? I got too excited. Oh. So, CJ Stroud throws for 348 yards, four touchdowns, and zero picks. B. John Robinson, here, let me go to Texans just so we can look at our stats. B. John Robinson averages 4.5 per carry, gets no touchdowns but 55 yards. Receiving are the rookie we drafted a couple years ago, or he's not a rookie anymore, but he was when we drafted him. 
goes for 100 yards and a touchdown. Laporta goes for 70 yards and a touchdown. Puka goes for 110 yards and a touchdown. And Josh Downs goes for 30 and a touchdown. So we were spreading the ball around. Let's see how the O-line played. How many sacks did we allow? Only three throughout the game. Defensively, were we able to get any turnovers? We were not. Sacks, we got one and a half out of Jalen Carter, one out of Will Anderson. And Jake Moody made his one field goal in the game. We'll take a look at who won Super Bowl MVP, and then we're going to finish out this video. As I expected, CJ Stroud won Super Bowl MVP. That was so much fun. This was such a fucking fun rebuild. It took so much time. I had to do all 55 draft picks in the fucking fantasy draft to make sure we got all rookies. And CJ Stroud takes us to a Super Bowl in the fourth year and wins Super Bowl MVP. That's going to be the end of this video. If y'all want to see more fantasy draft type videos, let me know. This is definitely the funnest video I've recorded so far. I cannot believe we won a Super Bowl in the final year. That was so fucking sick. I'm so hype. Uh, please leave a like on the video. Please subscribe. I'll give you a big kiss because the uh, past two videos I posted have actually been getting like a decent amount of views, but I haven't really been getting much likes or subs, and they would mean a fucking dick ton. And I'll twerk. I'll literally post a video of me twerking if everybody likes and subs. I don't know what I'm yapping about, but thank you so much for watching. Deuces.